say it was advanced warning that saved lives. Sirens were sounding at least 30 minutes before the storm hit. I thought it was just a typical thunderstorm until a tornado sirens went off. You can see the path of devastation left behind by the huge tornado. My mission is to, uh, today though, is to lift, lift people's spirits as best as I possibly can. I was scared witless the night of April 3rd, 1974. That was the super outbreak of tornadoes, largest outbreak in recorded history in North America. And it's burned indelibly into my brain, the voice of Wendell Harris, the anchor of WAPI television, Channel 13, come on and talk about tornado warnings have been issued in eastern Mississippi. And then tornado warnings were being issued in western Alabama, including the town of Guin. That scared the heck out of me. And, and out of that fear, I wanted to learn more about the atmosphere, I guess, as a way to mitigate that fear. Photos come in. This one here came in from Cheryl. And this is another shot of the front of the YMCA. So we've seen it now from a couple different vantage points. Let me go back and do some of the tornado warning coverage here. Frank, I heard the ding, and I got a feeling that some of the tornado watch counties are being canceled. So if yeah. you could update a tornado watch map. We can <laughs> what does a meteorologist do? Uh, my job is to forecast the weather, uh, but maybe more importantly than just forecasting it, it's figuring out what are the threats, what are the inconveniences, and how do we actively communicate that in a form that's useful to normal people living busy lives. The broadcast meteorologists obviously need to be sufficient, and pointing, and you know, have the right motions, not be too aggressive and not, not be too laxed. But as a meteorologist, my job does not stop after my job is over. Honestly, this job is 24-7, 365. I constantly think about weather. A good meteorologist has to be passionate about their job. You have to enjoy coming in every day and trying to figure out why is the atmosphere doing what it's going to do, and then applying the laws of physics in order to say, okay, well, if it's doing this today and here's why, then this is what it's gonna be doing tomorrow and the next several days ahead. And then you've got to be able to communicate that to people that are interested in the forecast. You have to connect with your viewers. If you're not connecting, all the work you do in the forecast, understanding the science is wasted. You can be the best meteorologist in the world, but if you cannot communicate the forecast where people can understand it, you haven't done your job. News director is the person who oversees the entire operation. You, you are where the, the buck stops. Viewers hear sirens and they think it's news. Well, that's not necessarily the case. We have criteria that we follow. Um, we don't cover every shooting. We don't cover every house fire. Um, they have to reach a certain level of severity before we cover them. Because we only have a very short time to tell a story. So we just have to really look at the story and decide, okay, what would be important to me to know if I was a viewer? and then we decide what we report and what we, we don't. Sometimes we have to make editorial decisions based on our staffing too. We have such a large geographic market that it takes seven hours to drive from one edge of the market to the other. Um, is it smart Is it that we send somebody four hours out of town where we won't, they won't get there in time for the five and six o'clock news? And it looks as though we are setting up for another severe weather day today. Tanner Swift live in the Cakeland Weatherplex this morning with your first look outside. Hey, Tanner. Hey, good morning. Are you familiar with the Greensburg tornado? Oh, yeah. I was watching people's coverage and I was in California. I've talked to Jay about that day and he tells me, you know, we're going the entire day. It's, it's somewhat cool out. It's, it does not seem like the storms are going to pop. Well, we're kind of playing watch and wait for the development of severe weather across parts of south central to southwestern Kansas. So let's look outside of the sky track. We've had quite a little bit of cloud cover, but some occasional sunshine, which has really helped warm us up. But as we look across western Kansas, we're going out there. Early on, it didn't look like anything other than a, a typical Kansas severe weather day. By the time it started, the storm started moving in on Greensburg, that changed. I was definitely paying attention. I was home. Um, I was on the phone with my stepmom, who still lives out on the farm, because Greensburg is right there by Pratt. And yeah, I was watching the whole thing. 
I remember the day of Greensburg because I made a forecast that day and some of my classmates made forecasts that day. And we had the discussion, do we go chase or not? You know what's, what's crazy? And not to go off in a different path, but out of everyone's coverage, the one that drew me the most was Jay's. This is meteorologist Jay Prater along with Matt Makins. We're here in the Cakeland Weatherplex and unfortunately we're watching a very dangerous situation unfold across Weather Kiowa Makins. County. We're keeping you updated during the commercial breaks on the rest of the network, but we are live continuous on... There was no doubt. Once this, once this event got in progress, once the violent tornado developed, even before it impacted Greensburg, we knew where it was, we knew where it was going, and we were sounding the alarm over and over and over again. We made the we knew it was going to be a severe weather outbreak of some type. Um, I don't remember the details of it, but it was one of those rare days where I guess you would call it layman's terms, a tornado emergency. We had it covered in terms of the weather department. We knew that there was a risk of severe weather. A risk of severe weather happens frequently in Cake Land during the spring, so it was not unusual to have this kind of setup. I'm engaged in the television coverage continuously at this point. Matt Makins contacted Dave Grant and said, essentially, I hope we're wrong, but unfortunately, it looks like Greensburg is probably gonna be impacted by a very large violent tornado. Here's your heads up for Dave Grant to get the news department involved with the coverage at that point. I was here overnight. Um, we assigned crews and then we had to re had to figure out how we're going to get additional crews there. And really, it's, it was such a big story, it was the only story. And I remember talking to my friends saying, if a storm can break the cap, it's gonna be off the charts. What we're watching and waiting is the atmosphere, if it develops thunderstorms, it can become severe very quickly. We're talking about a tornado threat. But we have an area in the atmosphere, a, a lid or a cap, if you will, that we've got to break through. Right now it's holding very strong. Hopefully it will hold strong. That will eliminate the severe thunder. In simplest terms, the cap is kind of a lid in the atmosphere. It holds the energy down. And there's an atmospheric profile that we call a loaded gun. And if you ever see a loaded gun on an atmospheric sounding, which is basically a map of the upper atmosphere, it means that the atmosphere is a ticking time bomb for severe weather. And so it's all about how quickly is the air rising. That's what causes thunderstorms. That's why you go from a clear blue sky to a severe thunderstorm in 30 minutes or less, because once that cap's gone, all that energy is able to be realized. And then it's these powerful rotating thunderstorms that can cause the violent tornadoes. If X, Y, and Z all come together, it's gonna to be a very bad day. Andy, how close are you to the county line? Uh, we have passed the county line already, Jay. Okay, so you're north of the county line of the tornado. We, do, we have two tornadoes on the ground, Jay. Uh, we have a small, uh, well, excuse me, a, a medium, if you will, to, the, to my north, northeast. We have a very large. <sighs> I can't believe it's been this long, man. Long time. You know, what was going through your mind that day? Something felt weird that day. Now, I don't know. I don't want to say it was a premonition or anything like that, but I, I recall you telling me it's a wait and see kind of day. The storm chasers meet with Jay and they decide where they're going to be placed before the storms develop. In this case, Lanny Dean, our storm chaser, was in exactly the right place. And he, he saw the, the Greensburg tornado develop he followed it into town and uh, just had some riveting coverage. Let's go back to Lanny Dean. Lanny, we're now live on the entire Cakeland Television Network. Tell us what you see. Jay, currently right now, just to let you know my position, I am uh, on one the highway headed west, and I do have a very large funnel at this time, Jay, uh, very large funnel back towards the, the area of, okay, tornado on the ground, Jay. Tornado on the ground, definite tornado on the ground near, I'm going to put it close to Sitka. Our chaser, Lanny Dean, reporting a very large tornado on the ground. This is about 12 miles southwest of Greensburg. For a whole 65 minutes, that tornado is on the ground covering 28 miles. Uh, through Dodge City and through Cake and through everybody. And uh, they knew that it was going to be a destructive tornado. We just didn't know for sure how big it was going to be. Uh, we didn't even really have a emergency operations plan before the tornado, so we really weren't 
prepared for anything like that. But I was able to hear our emergency EMS director. Uh, Tim Smith was south of, on 183, he could see it. We had a deputy that was south of town, he could see it. So we were just listening to radio traffic back and forth and knew that it was coming directly towards town. It was more of an, oh crap, this is really gonna happen type thing. It was probably about 9.20 when the tornado siren went off, so we went to the basement, but also like a typical Kansan transplant, I went back upstairs after probably 10 minutes of the tornado siren blasting and looked out the front door. It was just blurry, so I thought, well, I might as well go back downstairs. Nothing, nothing to see here. And it wasn't very long before I could he feel the hail and the rain on my back. I was hunched over my family and I could feel that. Our house literally lifted and left. When we got to the edge of town, we were a little early. The tornado was still in town. However, the wind updraft behind the tornado was tremendous. One of our fire guys was east of town and we kept trying to get to dispatch. Well, at that point, dispatch was going downstairs. Uh, the lady that screamed on, on the tape was actually one of our deputy's wives. He had been a deputy for us for, for a long time, and, and she was at home but had his radio with her. So the scream that you heard was actually her uh, as the tornado was going through her house. And I remember just praying, Lord, keep us, Lord, keep us. I just kept saying that over and over. I couldn't hear what my wife and daughter were saying because the, the wind was so loud. And then it was over. Suddenly, it was completely silent. Have you been able to visually see it at all? I'm not. One's okay. That's 10 4. Tim, what do you see right now? I am at mile marker just north of 49, and I see a very large tornado on the ground north of me, directly straight north of 183. 10 4. Is this the west tornado or the east tornado that was there before? I'm thinking this is the west one. That puts you, what, still six south, seven south of Greensburg? Affirmative. Ten four. Was there a tornado east of Greensburg also? Yeah, there were a number of tornadoes. The big one we have right now is just 183. Uh, headed straight north towards Greensburg. One Coa County, I'm going to be at a destroyed house south on 183. I'm going to see if I can't find any victims. And if you copy as soon as you can, I'm going to need some help with some rescue out here. Here on South 183, I got victims. I can't tell where they're at. Here's the Greensburg. Good lost all power. All the lights went out in Greensburg. What do you see from where you're at? Nothing but night, man. Quarter size hailstones. And so, can you get a location where the people trapped at? Careful, careful. Run! 
That dirt's probably holding some up too, maybe. Uh, someone hold the light or something. Yeah, I got a light. Fold. Wait, can you hold the light with your other hand? I want more guys over on that side. All right, all right. What are you doing? There were no first responders in Greensburg when we got in there. On okay. the west edge. So you were you were you were first in before the before the help came from Darren Dodge Bruin. and everybody else. Darren okay. Bruin, myself, Mikey, and Eric Duncan were the very first people on the scene. There were so many things that just kind of fell together. Uh, where triage set up was the old Dillon store. That's where the ambulances set up. Uh, the lights throughout town there was there's nothing. There was houses destroyed, no trees, so you could see from one end of town to the other. That's how people knew where to go because they seen all the emergency lights. So everybody just started congregating towards the middle of town. As we could already see there were lights on the highway. Although the entire town was black, we could tell there were vehicles down there with lights. So we began making our way down and it was very disorienting. It's just five blocks to main or to the highway. We got disoriented in that five blocks, although it was only a straight shot because all of the landmarks were gone. All the homes were so destroyed that you couldn't really tell where you were. A young lady and, and a, a, a gentleman were walking aimlessly down 400 Highway, past me. And the, the guy is bleeding from the head. And I remember saying, you guys okay? And he looks at me and says, yeah, we're just heading to the center of town. They have no idea where they're at. Right. They don't know what the hell has happened. They have no clue. And this is where, unfortunately, the, the team broke down. And it you know, broke down on me because I, my role has now switched. Right. It's all about rescue and recovery at this point. Sure. It's not about news gathering. You're done. And it's time to do the See, humane I, I, I thing never, and get involved. That, well, I'd never been there, though. I'd never right. been there. And I didn't have that history. I see a, a man and a woman standing there. And uh, I just started talking to him. You know, Are you guys okay? That was the first, you guys okay? And you could clearly tell they were not okay. That was Leela. Oh, really? Okay. I was on the west edge of town, that big motel. It used to be a big, and I say big, you know, it wasn't right. like a big hill, but for Greensburg, it was a pretty big motel. I, that's, that's a small motel that was on the west edge of town, right? Yeah. yeah. And your shot comes up. It's a car in a building. Currently, we have uh, we have the owners with us that, that survived this tornado by going into the closet. Leela, I'm going to put Leela on the phone. Hi, Jay. Leela, please tell us what Hello? happened. The image clearly shows that there is a car that has been thrown into a room in the hotel. And Lanny says, hey, I got somebody who wants to talk to you. And I'm like, OK. And he's like, well, here's Lena. And all I can do is think about, I'm glad you're OK. You know, and she, uh, and she, and she, you know, she, we talked about the fact that she was okay. And I mean, when you consider, uh, here I am looking at her motel and there's a car thrown through it. And I can't imagine what the rest of the damage was. And this was just on, keep on, this was the west edge of town. Thank you, thank you, you know, thank you so much. We were, we were watching you, we were watching Jay, blah. I mean, she just, kudos to, to you. She was wanting to try to give you kudos because she was literally, and she, you know, her husband, he didn't take shelter right off the bat. They didn't, they didn't, he, they kind of waited until almost the last minute. Horrible idea, but, but thankfully they, they did take shelter and ultimately 
it was right behind the front left tire of that vehicle as it's parked up. You see it in yeah. the video. Right. They're right behind that. That's where they, that's how they survived. Yeah, um, you know, we were watching actually Cake Channel. And I know you said, you know, the tornado is coming straight towards Greensburg. So we stayed at home until the last minute and then the power went out. So then um, I was inside the closet and then my husband came in <laughs> and we just stayed there until it was all over. I'm so glad that y'all are okay. And, and we love you, you know, for, I mean, all the news that you give, especially regarding weather. I cannot thank you enough that you are all right and I'm terribly sorry yeah. about your loss so you you own the hotel there in town and can you tell us how badly damaged your hotel is it's really bad I mean there's no salvaging left you know it will I mean all the roof is blown away all the windows are blown away our van is in one of our room actually um, you know and and could you tell me like uh, are we getting any severe storms in Greensburg, I mean, tonight. You know, we probably... We don't have anywhere to go. I would, yeah. I, I just, I, I can't believe. I, I'm still impressed that, that I mean, I, I, if the roles were reversed, I'm in that situation. I, I'm probably telling the media to go jump, okay? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna offer up the interview because I'm, I'm probably too busy wondering about what am I doing? What, what, you know, I can, I just, I can't fathom that. So the fact that, that Lena wanted to talk to us about her experience, I wanted to make sure that she was able to express herself and say everything she wanted to say. There was no way I was going to, I was going to interrupt that. But I had, I had to temper all of this with also in the back of my mind, it's not over. The storm is not over. The threat to life, limb, and property has not ended in Cakeland. So I have to very carefully balance this interview with a survivor that I want to give the utmost respect and compassion to because of what they went through, but at the same time, in the back of my head, realizing at some point I've got to end this because Stafford County is under a threat right now. Uh, between you and Pratt is okay. The severe thunderstorm that okay, is okay. probably still producing a tornado, unfortunately, is bearing down on St. John as we speak. And there may be another tornado there in St. John right now, but it's okay over in Pratt. Yeah, you know when you said that this one is really bad, you guys live to be in shelter? Yes. That's the exact moment I went in the closet. Mikey and I split off from Eric Duncan and went to the, the first house. People were trying, they were digging. At this point, we saw flashlights and you could hear people. And I said, hey, are you guys okay? And, and no, 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 there, there's... My, there's a lady in here, and uh, we thought that we would help. And we we got down to her. Um, her leg was about half severed off. Um, I know you saw a lot that night. That, and I understand you're comfortable sharing some things and not others, and that's perfectly fine, dude. I get it because you saw you saw things that you you weren't planning on seeing earlier in the day. So it's one of those things when you moved in, you're like, okay, where am I going to go in case of a tornado? Yeah, you thought yeah. that very quickly. And, and every place I've ever lived, I've always said, okay, where's our shelter? It was a few days before I went out there. Plus, I'm the kind of person where I don't want to interfere with, um, I just, I don't, want to, I, I don't want to get in anybody's way of recovery at all. It's not about me, you know, trying to get out there and, 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 it's not it's not it's not about me it's about those that survived greensburg and emergency management's there relief is there all the people are there in order to support and help their recovery you know you have to remember i've covered a lot of tornado damage over the years so what i saw wasn't necessarily like wow because i'd seen it before but the wow factor was the entire town was gone leveled it just looks like somebody's trash. Even though you know this is your home and this is all your possessions, it, it, just, it just looks like so much trash and you're picking through all that, trying to find anything that might be salvage, salvageable. Um, our, our house literally was gone. Seeing the house the first time was super hard. Um, you kind of just doesn't look the same anymore. <laughs> but even from the get-go, we were already starting to kind of 
there was tears obviously, but again, you kind of just pick up and keep moving. So like, what else can you do? You can't just break down and stop. I remember mom just kind of um, encouraging us to just, just go grab clothes, grab whatever. I had a, a special um, bunny from when I was little, I've always kept and so got him, you know, got out with that. So that was awesome to have that from, you know, it's been my whole life I've had that. So it was little things like that. Our souls are broke, you know, but we are here and we're still alive. And I thank God for that. My mom would talk about that. She, she knew of some people that just, that it hit them really hard and they just, they dwelt, you know, it was years that they were still upset by it, that they say we're struggling with it, still really negative about the whole thing. And, and I remember her just kind of telling us like, you just, you can't live that way. Like you can't, you have to move forward. You can't, you can't let that um, ruin your whole life. That was one event one time. Like you just, we got to keep going. I have to, I have to, I have to work pretty hard to like remember what certain things looked like. Cause now when I go back, like I'm used to seeing like, that's where that building is now. And, and then you go by some streets and you're like, oh, that's where like our house was. Like, oh, that's where the hospital used to be. You know, I, w I wish it could have come back much better than what it did, but we were in, you know, a tough time back then. We were, I think we were in somewhat of a depression. I mean, I love living where I li live. Uh, it's just, I wish it could have come back a little bit more. Sometimes people will come into Greensburg if they haven't seen it for a while or have never seen it since the rebuild, they'll, they'll say, oh, what a pitiful town. We don't look at it that way. This is home. And for many people, they have roots here. This is where they grew up. While technically rebuilding has pretty much come to a standstill, as far as I know, I'm here for the long haul and we'll see what that means. It's home. Everyone has said that that meteorite was lost in some form. It was. She said it wasn't. She said it's well, a right. bit. well, okay. There was report. Okay, then. Okay. Well, there's a meteor report that the that the palisite meteorite was missing. But no offense, it's a big, heavy rock, and I, so we knew it wouldn't go far. I think it was just covered under some of the other debris from the tornado, and then they uncovered the debris, and hey, there it is.